Hello, I'm Odin, and today I get to play with a new animatronic cosplay accessory as Felicia and I make Catra from She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. You got sent some fun things. What do we have? I've got some new toys. I'm excited because, come here, Cosgear sent me a package of animatronic cosplay pieces and parts. What it is, is a set of cat ears, or ears in general, I'm calling them cat ears, right? And then also a long tail. Right now it's a, it's a black box. And then we have uh, some, some fuzzy stuff we can put on it. We'll get to that in a second. Go ahead and open that one up. This is a pair of ears. They can be cat ears, they can be wolf ears, they can be fox ears. Uh, it's just a headband with a pair of magnetically attached, motorized, Whoa. rechargeable ears. And then inside of the different boxes, I know there's like a headband, so there's an elastic headband if you want to use that instead of the, the hairband. And then I think we have our cable. charging cable. We have a little bit of Velcro and it comes with a set of... Uh, oh, those are gonna be perfect. I can totally just replace this color. Oh yeah? This color with the nude, the black's going to work. Okay, good. The um, white fur needs to go for this look. Right, for the look we're talking about. Which, uh, yeah, we, we got cat ears, we have a cat tail. What, what look are we talking about? I mean, you saw it in the description, but still. We're making Catra today from She-Ra, Princess of Power. And there's also an animatronic tail. Just as a plastic tail, it really makes me think of a xenomorph tail from Alien. Yeah. And what's neat is um, this is a kit, so we actually get to put this one together. So we got ears and we got a tail. What is this? That's the, the motor for the tail. The battery. This is the battery. Not in it. I'm like, right. this is too light. I've actually seen one of these uh, when I went to Oklahoma for a con. A uh, fellow used it for his, uh, Bruce used it for his alien costume. And even though it was only on a mannequin all day, it was, it was really neat that on occasion the tail would just kind of swish, swish a little. The cause tail can be assembled in two different lengths. Oh, okay. She has a long tail. I say we do it as long as it can go. Oh, for sure. The individual tail segments are all identical and easy to connect together. For only moving in one direction at each joint, you get some really good movement out of it. Right? The tail connects to the motor in the same way. A metal rod acts as a stabilizer for the desired curve of your tail. A set screw on the motor holds the tension on the wire, keeping that curve. A pair of strings winds down each side of the tail and is secured to the end. And when you power it on... It's alive! So I wonder, does it go through different modes? Because this is definitely doing something different than it did before. So every time you turn it on and off, are you changing modes? It's supposed modes? to go with your hips. So if you shake your hips more, it moves with the hips. So it's supposed to be intuitive. The belt brace has two adjustable straps. So then... So then this... Just slides on to, come here. I'll just put this in your back pocket for right now, if you don't mind. Not at all. You actually have pockets today. I know, I, lots of my stuff has pockets. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, okay. Dun, dun, dun. It is totally moving with you. Are you chasing your tail now? <laughs> kind of. Kind of. <laughs> it's fun. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> but it moves. Right. So it's we funny. We can make the... it more taut so that it sticks up more if we yeah, want totally. to. Yeah, totally. But I think this looks this more is like... a This is a good relaxed cat, yeah. It's funny, the, uh, the, the USB cable cord actually bugs me. <laughs> it's not important, it shouldn't, but. Cosgear also sent us a brown fur cover. So it has Velcro to put on the electronics. Okay. Place the sticky back Velcro over the motor and slip the cos tail into the fur tail cover and that Velcro on the end will secure the cover to the motor. There we go, let's get my butt in view. 
a tail. You have a tail. Do the shift your weight and make it wag. Do so you doing that before where you're dun. Yeah. Dun. There it goes. Dun. Okay, that's actually really cool. <laughs> How many of these do you think we would have had on Smosh? Two. Two. <laughs> Enough for two actors to interact with each other. Right. I'm just going to be doing this for the rest. All right. So, uh, was there a thing we're supposed to do with, with putting Velcro in, on these? Yeah, they came with pieces of Velcro. Okay. There are Velcro strips that stick to the ear motors, which will hold the ear covers in place. Cause ears comes with a set of patterns for making your own custom ear covers. We've got some electronic parts. We put them together. They seem to work. In order to make Catra. She has black ears. This all works. This white part I'm going to take off. And then okay. possibly do a little black line in the center. Yeah. That'd work. Can we do that out of foam? Just a little. Yeah, I totally. You cut a little piece of black uh, craft foam or something put on there. Yeah. Yeah, easy. Okay, but this needs to go. Okay. We removed the white fur accent from the ear covers that came with our cause ears and cut a small bit of adhesive back foam to fill in the centers and make the covers look like Catra's ears. I don't have them on crazy mode. That's probably wise. But now, they're, now they're both straight up instead of the one being tilted back a little bit. I think. They're reacting to sound. Yeah. 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 They can hear. Which is pretty cool. Right? The next day, we got back together to finish the costume. Okay, we figured out the tail. We figured out the tail. We figured out the ears. So now it's time to figure out the... Headdress, I think. I think it's the next thing to do, yes. So I'm glad you're wearing the Wanda one, because I... It seems like that's the closest one that I've already done that's going to be pretty much what we want. Uh, it's got a slightly different shape. Yeah, I brought out my Excellent. number 17 French curve. I printed my pattern for the Scarlet Witch headdress, and we modified the design to look more like Catra's headdress. The first version is cut from paper and is test fit. And then a final version is cut from cardboard. I like cardboard patterns that are easier to trace onto foam. Catra has two black accents on her headdress, and I decided that I'm going to cut them out and make them into recessed panels. Yeah, pack your angry eyes just in angry. case. I yeah, like this yeah. side better than this side, and they're the same. <laughs> and they, yeah, I think it works. Okay, yeah, once it's on your face, okay, it totally works. But on the table, that didn't look right to me. <laughs> it doesn't look right. <laughs> but, uh, but once you put it on, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh, you got to cut them out. I want to cut those out, yep. The completed pattern is traced onto some 2mm what the foam, and then it's cut out, including the angry triangle accents. I tape the leftover piece of foam onto a plastic jar, which gets us the right shape for the headdress. Trace on the target area, you know, so we know where to glue, and then simply contact cement the first cutout piece onto that curved piece. The pencil marks help guide the placement. And when the glue is set, the two curved foam parts are going to hold that shape of the jar. Then I can cut off the bottom layer so it matches the top layer. So bend all that in, we want to bend that in, we want to bend this smoosh in. Smoosh it and smoosh it. Smoosh it and smoosh it. And then when it comes time to uh, paint it and stuff, that'll help add a little bit of body to it as well. There's that, and the last thing that I had done on the Wanda one was... Looks like uh, Catra to me. It does look like Catra. Now it feels like Catra? Now it feels like Catra. It looked wrong on the table. <laughs> don't, don't we talk about that? You know, art, it just looks wrong until all of a sudden it's not. It looks worse until it looks better. Yeah. It gets worse before it gets better. Like the mess gets worse the, before it's organized. Yeah. Yeah. At least in my experience. We add one more small strip of foam to the back of the forehead. It's just one more layer of curve to help hold that shape. 
I use a little naphtha to clean up the extra glue from the front of the foam, and the headdress is ready for Plasti Dip. It was a bit windy outside, but I was able to get a couple of coats of black Plasti Dip onto the foam, and then spray paint the piece a red color that's pretty close to what we want. Now, spray paint is not ideal on foam. I mean, it works and it sticks, but spray paint can crack when it's flexed. But spray paint dries fast, and we want to finish this cosplay today. So the next part we want to make is the belt, right? Yep. I purchased some stirrup material, some heavy-duty leather. I mean, it's going to be a little heavier than we need, but it was the right color. And then they also had a belt buckle blank which I thought would work well for her belt buckle as a start. So actually, we're making a belt, why not buy a belt buckle? <laughs> Novel idea, I would have never thought. <laughs> so it's just, a, I mean, it's totally Luke Skywalker's belt, but it's just, a, yeah, so. Felicia measured her waist and decided that 36 inches was going to be a good length for the belts. That was easy. The two inch wide leather belt was cut actually eight inches longer because we needed extra length for the belt buckle. My plan to assemble the two inch belt is to cheat a little. I'm gonna punch holes on both ends of the leather and then slip each side of the leather over the post and the buckle. This will allow that extra tab to stay under the belt and will look more like what Catra's wearing on the show. For the half inch wide belt, I just cement some Velcro tabs to the back of the leather. It just needs to be a loop that hangs around Catra's waist. What I really wanted to do was laser etch the Horde logo onto the blank metal belt buckle. But it seems that the metal reflects the laser too much and nothing was etched. So I tried adding ink to the metal just to see if that would let the metal be decorated. And that also didn't work. We just lasered the ink back off the metal. My next thought was to use spray paint. First, I cut blue tape as a mask for the logo, which let me easily paint the logo onto the buckle. I used a clear sealer as a primer first, so the red paint would not leak under the tape. You know, just a little bit of clear might. And while I worked on the buckle, Felicia prepared the orange corset top. The vinyl was nice and thin and stretchy, but that could let the zipper on the front look a little wavy once it's zipped up. So Felicia glued a strip of two millimeter what the foam behind the zipper flap, which gives just enough stiffness that that vinyl is going to lay flat. Then she added some chain stitch loops on each hip, sized for the two different belts. Now, how are you making the chain stitch? I see you, it looks like you're braiding, but what are you doing with the stitches to make a chain stitch? I'm essentially crocheting, like I'm going to stitch it, but instead of pulling it all the way taut, I grab my thread and make a new loop with that thread, pushing the knot to the bottom. Grab a loop, push my knot to the bottom. And I keep doing that until it's as long as I need it to be. Okay. And this isn't uh, embroidery floss. You're actually using a regular thread. It's just quadruple through the needle. I'm using four strands of thread. That does not take long at all. No, it doesn't, does it? Yeah, that's more than enough. Okay. And then to finish it so it doesn't come undone, you actually like pull it tight, let it go through the loop and then pull it tight. Oh, okay, so you're tying a knot in the end. Yeah, just pull. Okay. And then I thread it back through to make my loop. And I'm stabbing it through the stitching line, so I'm hiding it. Okay. Next to a nice bone. <laughs> Next to a bone in the corset. Yes. So it's not going to end up making a... a, a, a it's not going to pull. It's not going to pull and make a little peaker. It's going to have a little bit of extra support. The paint on the belt buckle is dry, and it's time to peel the tape off. Did it pull the tape off? The paint off? Damn it. <laughs> Seriously? These belt buckles seemed like such a good idea. They seemed like exactly the right idea. And now it's time for plan C, or D, or F, or whichever. I lost count. But first, I stick some red vinyl on the belt buckle. And then laser cut the vinyl. I mean, obviously, it's not going to hurt the metal. I mean, I could just cut it out with my vinyl cutter. But I really wanted to use the laser machine. 
And while I was setting up the newest version of the belt buckle, Felicia modified the stirrup pants to have the knee holes and claw marks that Catra has on hers. She measured and marked where all the cuts needed to be, using pins as a guide for making the cuts. And then simply cut the heavy spandex of the pants. Uh, this type of fabric or material doesn't need to be finished because spandex isn't going to unravel or fray. So just cutting the material is fine. So multiple attempts later. I can breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so the, the laser cutter can cut vinyl. <laughs> Actually, it, 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 it cut everything else. It just didn't etch this metal probably because it was too reflective, but it cut everything else I wanted it to do. But yes, that's fine with me. I like it. This is even undoable <laughs> if we wanted to. No. Let's. <laughs> so, well, not, not this time. I meant yeah. like in the future, you have a new costume. You don't want to buy another belt buckle. You could remove this yes. vinyl, put a new color on. Yes. So there's a detail across the bottom uh, that turns this into kind of a, I was thinking, <sighs> nothing else is stuck to this belt. I was thinking, oh, we'll glue on a piece of, and I all of a sudden realized this whole glue thing has been an issue with this. I decided to grind the surface of the metal, giving it a tooth for some glue to actually stick to. And we cut the decorative piece right. from some leather and it was painted with silver acrylic paints and used super glue to stick it to the belt buckle. The super glue did adhere to the marked surface of the metal. We got all the pieces. We have all the pieces. We have one little detail left to do, and uh, we need to put elastic or something onto the head so it actually stays to your head the most comfortable. All right. Because we could use T-pins, drywall screws. Yeah. We could super glue it right staples. to your forehead. Staples. I've used staples. Here you go. Glue. Now I guessed on the elastic placement and just glued it just about where the arms on some glasses are. Now the elastic is a little long, but we can always tie it on a knot for a better fit. I do like that when I sprayed it with a plastic dip, you, you, I can kind of see it. It curled even more, mm -hmm. which is going to be good for, for when it's worn. Yes. I actually really like the way it hugs the face and the cheeks kind of turn in. That little detail worked. Yay. Crazy little details. So uh, I think with this, all the pieces are done. And would you walk us through the parts that we got in front of us? We really haven't covered that yet. No, we haven't. We've just been doing individual pieces, but not a whole. Not Yeah, not all the parts that we're going to be using. Yeah. Not all put together yet. So. Do you want to start at the top of the head? And work your way head, down? shoulders, knees, and toes. Yeah, starting off, she has a crazy mane. If you guys haven't noticed, my hair got floofier. A little floofy. You have a pink thing. It's going to get floofier. So anyone know what this is? <laughs> I had to explain it to a youngling what a crimp <laughs> crimping iron is. <laughs> what is going on with your hair? I crimped it. And I'm going to do a second crimping. Okay. And get floofier. We'll see how floofy we can get it. Nice. Instead of doing a wig, I opted for my own hair just because wigs are uncomfortable and itchy and I... And your hair is pretty close already. Right? It's a mane. And then... And then you have ears? Ears. These things are the cherry on top. They move, they wiggle, and they what? They are what's going to make this costume magical. Right. They're sound. I love the sound one. That one's my favorite mode. Because <laughs> it's alive! It's paying attention. It's, it's like a little pet on your head. <laughs> so we got these really great ears. Uh, moving down to the face, we we made the foam face mask. And I really like the way it turned out. <laughs> and then as we go down on Amazon, I ordered a tank top with a mock turtleneck, because it isn't a full turtleneck, it's a mock turtleneck. Okay. Sleeveless tank top. Orange, the right shade, well, right-ish shade of orange, the closest I could find. And it has the V she has on top, and if I really wanted to be semantics, could unzip it to here to have the sharp. Right. But in reality, when it's all zipped up. It's gonna fit better? It, it has that same look and feel without yeah. it feeling like, why aren't you zipping it up? But I have options. And then we added chain stitch thread loops 
for the belt. After lots of drama. <laughs> After lots of drama, trying to get stuff to stick to the metal belt buckle, the one thing I was taking for granted as, oh, it's a metal belt buckle. This will be easy. <laughs> <laughs> the part we thought was going to be the easiest, we don't have to think about it part. Right. Took the most tough of our day. <laughs> Yes, it did. But after six tries, we finally got a Horde logo on the front of the belt buckle. Only six? <laughs> okay, maybe it was more, but <laughs> it was somewhere in there. Okay, and then on the other side, it would be the little loop belt. And then we have down to the pants, a pair of leggings. Happened to be the right color on Amazon also. And stirrups, they're stirrup pants. There's a, that's good, she's wearing stirrup pants. Specifically stirrup pants. That's what it's called if you guys are trying to order it. <laughs> Naming things is kind of the hardest part of finding something. There's one other piece we skipped over. What did we... <gasps> the other part that makes her... Well, ears makes her a cat, but having an animatronic tail... Is kind of the magic. Yes. <laughs> we totally did skip that, but yeah, because it's after the... Right. Yeah. yeah, it's all right. Yeah. So I really like that there's the tail that has a personality of its own. Right. I think we gotta put this all together. I think so. I'll set up some lights if you wanna get suited up. All right. The cause ears are electrically moving ears for cosplay. They move based on sound and head tilts, which is really fun. And they have five modes in total. And they're fastened with magnets and work great both with and without a wig. The cause tail is an autonomous electric tail. It follows your hip movement and then moves automatically when you stand still. Both the shape and length are flexible, and you can change it perfectly for your character. Both the ears and the tail are made with high-quality materials and have interchangeable covers. Cosgear likes to say that these are the only tails and ears you'll ever need. Go to cosgear.co slash odinmakes to get 10% off and bring your cosplay to life. All the items used in this video were ordered online. I put a list in the description. I want to thank Cause Ears for giving us such fun toys to play with. I didn't, uh, I didn't really think about how much fun it would be to have something animatronic added to your cosplay. I think it really adds a lot to Catra and probably helps Felicia channel her inner cat, so to speak. Uh, even though using the laser was a little bit trying, has a little bit uh, disappointment, still, if I can find the the right thing. If I had a laser pointer for the cat, that might really do something. Okay, I'll hurt her eyes, so I shouldn't do that. But, you know, thank you very much, Cause Ears. Thank you very much, everyone else, for watching. It was a lot of fun putting together the Catra in, in a weekend with Felicia's help. And I know there's gonna be lots of different ways you can put together one of the members of the Horde from She-Ra and the Princess of Power. But this is how Odin makes. In today's episode, we used power tools, chemicals, and things that could be harmful to your skin. So remember to always wear your safety gear, goggles, respirator, and gloves, so that you can be safe crafting and cosplay for years to come. I already went off the line. I'm telling. No, I don't tell anyone. No one will know. It's not like we're recording this. I want to thank Icy Cook. Cara Palpatine, Stupid Monkey, and all of my Patreon supporters. Patreon members at the $5 and above level get access to my private Discord, which includes weekly games with me, proper related chat, and early access to live streams. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.